The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and our mission on this video was to give you a performance evaluation on the new Nevada 58 from Absolute, but we've got a tropical storm coming up, so we ended up with weather that prevented us from getting our own test numbers, but Absolute has done plenty of numbers on their own, and we'll give you a report on what they achieved, but that's not going to stop us from taking a look at all of the operational features either, so let's take a look. The lower helm, starboard mounted, begins with a compass right on top of the panel, soft touch dash, and then all carbon fiber to the panel. Here we have two 12-inch multifunction displays. We can go up to 17-inch. Seakeeper control over to the port hand side. That's also integrated into the Garmin display. And I also like how there's a alarm page giving you your sea readiness, your air conditioning, and any other alarms. Volvo Penta EVC display over to the right hand side and air conditioning vents just below that. Rocker switches are all the way underneath the panel on both sides of the steering wheel, which is mounted to a fixed base. Drink holders, ignitions, trim tabs over on the left-hand side, digital engine and throttle controls, joystick for the IPS system, and bow thruster. Now, just behind, single bucket seat with a flip-up bolster, all leather, slides fore and aft. Now, not only do we have an electrically actuated opening side window to the port-hand side, to the starboard side, we've got this watertight door that not only has an opening window, I never see that in a watertight door, but the fact that it does open gives me easy access to the starboard side of the boat so that I can see the whole side while I've got my hand right on both the IPS joystick and the bow thruster joystick. Great feature to have. And here's another nice feature about this helm. Look at the electrical panel. It's not hidden behind some bulkhead out of the way where we have to go find it. It's clear sight of the helm. The DC system is over on the left-hand side and the AC system is over on the right-hand side. There's a lock to keep the glass panels from opening up and I can use that to slide this window open, lock and unlock it. But this one here, I've got to put my hand on it and smudge the glass to get it open. I'd like to see a little finger hole so that I could just slide that open a lot easier. The crew cabin is accessed from a door in the center of the transom. Let's take a look. This is set up for a crew of two, one berth to the port side, one to the starboard side. There's storage, windows leading out through the transom and opening port lights to both sides. Forward is the head that is down a bit of a step and then just beyond the head is access to the engine room. Let's take a look at that. It's a roomy engine room, standing room for me anyway at five feet, eight inches overhead. Focal point being the D8 IPS 800 Volvo Penta. Diesel engines with the pods mounted just behind, no need for jack shafts. Hydraulics to the swim platform are located to the starboard side aft. Obviously, we've got another access point from the cockpit just above. Now to both sides of me, fuel tanks, sight tube on one giving the level. And that's fine because there are crossovers. I can see it right here going all the way across, so they level themselves out. 21.5 kW generator right in the center, and I'm sitting on the Seakeeper 9 gyro. Now, the boat is built to accommodate the gyro, but it is offered as an option. Now, the Nevada 58 has a symmetrical layout, so both sides, the side decks are 16 inches wide. Bulwarks come up 30 inches. Rails top out at 36. There are boarding gates, outward opening to both sides. Most importantly, though, the side decks are protected overhead. Continuing forward, two seven-inch steps bring us up to the foredeck. Bulwarks come up 22 inches, rails top out at 32 inches. And as we make our way to the ground tackle, it's all on an elevated platform 12 inches off the deck. There are courtesy lights to both sides, 12-inch cleats flanking the quick windlass, leading out to a roller that is mounted into the tow rail. On top of the cap rails, chalks over to the side. We have easy access to the road locker, confirming we have, yes, an all-chain road, and there's a remote control. Also to the side of this platform, there's a quick connect for a freshwater washdown. The flybridge helm is center mounted. There's a compass right in the middle of two panels. Each will hold a 12-inch display. This one only has a single 12-inch display to the port hand side. Control for the quick windlass right next to that. The steering wheel is on a tilt base. Over to the port hand side, the bubble penta display. And then to the right, the digital throttle and shift and the IPS joystick. Fusion stereo is just alongside that. I noticed that there are beverage holders to both sides and fully forward, there's a bit of a windscreen and it's adjustable up and down. We just loosen two thumb screws and adjust it manually. 
An approaching tropical storm prevented us from getting test numbers during our visit with the Nevada 58. We even tried to get out the inlet, but when we started taking green water over the bow, we figured it was not going to produce any numbers of significance. But Absolute has done extensive testing on the 58, and they report that with the IPS pod drive engine spooled up to 3071 RPM, the speed topped out at 27.7 knots. At that speed, the 65.3 gallon per hour fuel burn produced 0.4 nautical miles per gallon in a range of just over 242 nautical miles. As is typical of IPS drives, that was also the best cruise setting. If we back the throttles down to 2100 RPM, the speed drops to 12.7 knots and we only gain 3.5 nautical miles in range. So clearly, the best course of action is to set the speed for the best comfort in the prevailing conditions. If we're going for distance, then 1000 RPM will have her running at trawler speeds of just under 6 knots, and then the range opens up to over 886 nautical miles. All this, of course, while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 634 gallon total fuel capacity. Well, as you can see, we gave it the college try, but we didn't quite make it. We did get it to see, however, that she is a very nice handling boat in those conditions, just not going to get up to full speed. Also, around the dock with a 25 35 knot crosswind, had no problem bringing it in and out. And that's my full performance evaluation on the new Absolute Nevada 58. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.